Hey, happy campers, Todd here at Great American RV Superstores, and today we're going over the operation of a suburban furnace. Anytime we talk about any gas appliances, such as our furnace, we want to go over safety first. We want to make sure that our CO detector is operating properly, that our smoke detector is operating properly, and make sure that once a year you're getting a gas leak check done on your unit to ensure that we don't have any leaks in that LP system. They come in two different styles. You'll have this exterior cover right here, or you'll have just that exhaust cover right there, that silver chrome piece. For this particular model, this cover is removable. We'll take that off in a minute and go over some of the components inside. Operation of the unit is fairly simple. If you can control your thermostat at home, you can operate the furnace. You go kick that furnace on, make sure you're on the gas function. Uh, there will be an electric function on some units, which means you have heat pumps up in the rooftop air. For this one, it's just the gas function, and you would go into furnace and turn it on and raise the temperature above room temperature. At that point, you'll hear the igniting sound on the furnace. It will go through three cycles of trying to ignite. If it didn't ignite, it will shut off and you will have to turn that thermostat back off and back on in order to reinitiate that cycle. So that leads us into a little bit of diagnostic. If our furnace tried to ignite, we heard the clicking noise and it just didn't light, well then we might have some air in our lines. First thing we want to do is make sure that our tanks are on and that they're full and we're providing enough gas to it. If you pulled your unit out of storage and you just turned that gas on, you might have some air in that system. You want to go over to your stove, turn the burner on, ignite it, and make sure you have a nice blue flame. Let it run for about 30 seconds and then go back and try that appliance again. This is standard for all gas appliances. I always suggest that if you pulled your unit out of storage, you purge the air out of your lines first before you go into operating anything. So once you purge that air, like I said, reinitiate that furnace and you'll hear that clicking and it may take a couple of cycles again to go ahead and light finally. But once you've got that air out, you're more promising to have it ignite. Once it's ignited and running, this furnace is gonna burn, of course, until that thermostat shuts it off. You have your floor vents and you also have side vents that that hot air is gonna come out of uh, down below. Now, the furthest that vent is away from our furnace, the lower that airflow is gonna be in there. So that's very common, keep in mind. Once that furnace has reached the proper temperature, it's gonna shut off the flame and you're still gonna hear that fan running for a little bit until everything is cooled off inside, at which point it'll shut off. Let's go over a few components. We'll go ahead and remove this cover and exhaust plate off of here. They have four screws here and six screws here for the exhaust plate. So we pull our cover off. We can see we have an insertion tube right here that goes around this and sleeves around the tube for our exhaust. So we wanna make sure when we put that on that that goes on properly and it's nice and sealed. So down here we have our exhaust burner tube. All this will get very hot whenever that unit is running. So be mindful of that whenever you're out here on the exterior enjoying the patio area. Above our exhaust tube, we have a limit switch here. and We also have a board up top. What these limit switches do is lets us know the fan is rotating and it tells that control board to open up that gas valve and that it can light and begin to heat that fan's not operating and not moving or that limit switch is bad, then the board is not gonna allow that gas valve to open because the gas is just sitting there and that could cause some issues, uh, safety issues, if it were to try to ignite. So there's no flow, no light. We have an on-off switch outside under the cover. That's generally left in the on position. In the event that you were ever to go to work on anything out here or maintain it, you wanna go ahead and just turn that off. Now we can see in here, all this stuff is all 12 volt operated. So we wanna make sure that we have a good solid 12 volt, whether we have a good battery or our charging system is operating off the 110 plugins that you have at the campground or at your house. Without that, this system is not gonna work at all. So 12 volts is a very important component for our furnace. So with that being said, if our furnace doesn't try to operate at all, we go to our fuse panel over by the breaker panel and check and make sure that that 12 volt fuse is good for the furnace. Quick maintenance ideas is we need to make sure that we keep this area sealed around the furnace. If we have just the cover, just that silver exhaust cover like we do on this one, uh, we wanna make sure that it's sealed around the edges right here and there's no water intrusion on the inside of that furnace that could damage the interior of your unit. Beyond that, maintenance wise, you just wanna get an air nozzle and blow through that exhaust tube 
and blow any debris, dirt divers, or anything that might have built a nest in there. They do make exhaust screens for the bugs that can go on here. Now, generally, manufacturers of these furnaces and water heaters and stuff that have that will tell you not to operate your furnace with that bug screen on and that's for the reason that it will reduce the airflow to that unit and it may cause an issue so if your unit isn't working properly with that screen on it take it off and give it a shot and see if that doesn't resolve your problem now if you've never used your furnace and you go to operate it you're going to have a small burn off of oils and paint I always suggest open up all your windows because it's going to get a little bit smoky and smelly in there let all that burn off and, and get all that smell out of there before the first time you go camping and use that furnace. Don't wait until then to try it. Beyond that, we want to exercise that furnace once a year. You're still going to have some little small buildup in there and you're going to have that little stinky smell when you first burn it. But of course, it's not going to last as long as the first burn after never being used. That's pretty much everything on the furnace. I don't suggest to a whole lot of people with that experience to go in and tear any of this apart. The ones with the cover are accessible that way. The ones with just the exhaust cover, you would have to remove from the interior to access it. And anytime you remove either one of these, you're breaking that LP system seal uh, and you put it back in, you want to get that gas check, make sure you don't have any leaks because of course that is a huge safety hazard. So I only suggest that people with proper experience work on this. If you have any problems and you can't get them resolved, bring it to one of our service stations, give us a call or book an appointment online and we'll be more than happy to take care of you. We hope you enjoyed our video on the Suburban Furnace. Keep watching, click like, share, notify, all those awesome things on Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, wherever you saw us here today. And keep watching here at Great American RV Superstores where we bring the how-to to you. Making memories, one